Good morning, Mr. Alatori. This is Robert Presley, and this is, I'll be presenting my persuasive speech for Limestone College. Welcome, everyone. Thanks for coming. I am Robert Presley, and I love technology, and I specifically like cell phones. If you think back about 10 years ago, how far the cell phone technology has come. You remember the bag phones? I know I do. I remember lugging that thing around. But what bothers me about cell phone technology is this instant message phenomenon that all these kids are doing. Have you looked around in the malls and the restaurants and, and seen these young kids with these cell phones and all they do is constantly, it's constantly. There was a tracking report by the Nelson Group done last month that tracked cell phone usage by all the, the major companies. And the thing that stuck out in my mind, the statistic, is that kids between the ages of 13 and 17 that have cell phones are sending and receiving 1,742 text messages per month on these things. It is phenomenal. So you might ask, so what's the big deal? Well, here's the big deal. Are these kids actually learning the communication skills that they're going to need in life? Are they learning the conversational and emotional skills that they need? You know, the one-on-one -on -one interaction with other people. Are they learning writing, spelling, vocabulary? Are they learning, actually learning the English language? I'm 45 years old, and I still don't have a grasp of the English language. And here they are using these IM, or the IM lingos, which is a, a group of characters that don't mean anything to most people, but it, apparently it's a complete sentence. But is that complete sentence really complete and coherent? Who knows? Texting also leads to isolationism. I've seen my daughter come in from school plenty of times, go up to her room, and I don't see her again until the next day. We try not to let that happen, but that happens. The biggest thing that bothers me about texting is people driving while texting. Seventeen Magazine, you've heard of that magazine, very popular with the, with the teenage group, surveyed a bunch of teens, a lot of teens, and would you believe that almost 50% of them admitted to texting while driving? Now that right there is disturbing. That is disturbing, 46%. So what can we do as parents? Well, the first thing we can do, we can limit access on these things. We can, we can limit the amount of texting that can go on and the time of day it goes on. The second thing we can do, we can talk to our kids. We can, we can ask them to talk to their friends and their family, you know, instead of texting. We can also have them invite friends over so that they've got somebody to talk to, you know, if, they're, if they seem like they're alone. We can also restrict these during family time. For example, my daughter had a friend over one evening and we sat down for supper. My daughter, Hannah, she knows better. We sat down, I got ready to say the blessing. I looked up, her friend was like this. Well, needless to say, I shut that down in a hurry. But the biggest thing I think we can do as parents is lead by example. If we're going down the road talking on the cell phone and texting, that is not a very good example. And we ought to be ashamed of ourselves. But in conclusion, we need to take interest in our kids. We need to teach them that technology is good as long as they use it selectively. Kids are, kids are our future, and we need to do whatever we can do to support them and to enable them to succeed in life. And, and I would hope you would feel the same way. But in, in the end, I want to leave you with a few words that a college intern, Steve Taylor, wrote in an essay called The Travesty of Technology. He said, a CEO doesn't rise through the ranks by texting the board members. True leadership comes from life skills. And then lastly, he said, a little, a little conversation will go a long way.